Good afternoon. My name is Knut Lingard. I am a performance architect at Sci5, and with my colleague Arup, we are part of the RISC-V performance modeling SIG, and we're going to talk about the open source cycle accurate performance model that we are open or providing for the community and the community-wide use. The first question is, why are we doing this? Well, developing a good quality microarchitecture of any type, whether you're looking at um, a core model or a memory subsystem model or an external model of any kind, requires essentially deep performance analysis. A good performance model is usually very useful for the, for, for the purpose of that performance analysis. So putting a model together based on something like a, a nice framework and so forth enables you to be able to do that rapidly and so forth, and that's what is the key. Um, it's difficult, however, to build those performance models. They're usually time-consuming, build and maintain, especially if you are an independent company or so forth, and you may need to actually build on top of either existing infrastructure that's already there, or you may want to try to hopefully use an open source solution that might be there. So we asked ourselves, can we create or provide an, in the RISC-V environment, uh, essentially an environment that allows new developers who are coming up with any, want to do core performance analysis, memory subsystem analysis, SOC analysis, or anything like that, can we provide an open source standard based on an open source framework that is available for people to use? Provide a template or an example of exactly what that looks like. Um, we also would like to provide some basic standards for trace formatting. For example, if you're doing a core performance analysis work, it would be great if you had a nice standard for how you generate traces from functional modeling and so forth, and allows you to do very fast performance exploratory types of efforts. So we move forward with this. And the idea is, is that our charter is very simple. We want to drive that strategy and coordinate the development of the common performance modeling and cycle accurate simulation frameworks, as well as contributing to the RISC-V ecosystem. And we want to also relate other things such as trace file formats, data sharing between tools and members, and trace files and so forth. We can get a little bit more detail in our tutorial tomorrow. There's a lot of definitions of what tracing means, especially in this context. But we want to be able to co coordinate that selection and joint development of a performance modeling and simulation solution or tool set across the RISC-V environment. Why that's useful is simple. If you are a developer or a hardware developer and you are looking at doing something with RISC-V, maybe you want to do an interconnect type of model. If you have something you can start with, it's coming from the RISC-V open source community that represents a RISC-V performance model or an out-of-order superscalar processor design, for example. If we have something that's off the shelf that you can use and build your own internal technology based on that, you have something that can drive it. Flip side of that is if you are a core developer, you can use this as a template to start with your core performance analysis work, and you could work with the same customer that I talked about the first time to be able to do an interaction, and you can actually build an entire modeling ecosystem focused on doing performance analysis. So the RISC-V performance model is currently available in uh, the RISC-V software solutions, part of the RISC-V foundation right now. It's brand new. It's only a few months old. It's an open source cycle approximate model. There's no such thing as a cycle accurate model because we're not really accurately modeling anything. But we do have a concept of essentially an out of order superscalar processor that is the template for you to build your own CPU design. Also has template componentry to allow you to build your own memory subsystem combined or even interconnect designs. Um, it is a superscalar outer order processor, and it is trace driven, meaning that you have to have already executed and run an executable that generates a trace, and tomorrow in the tutorial we'll get to showing how to do that, and run this through this model. This model does not do any functionality, it just simply tells you with the performance of that trace that you were given it, how it runs. Now, this is just the model itself. The model itself is actually built on top of an open source modeling platform called Sparta. I'm currently, I'm, I'm currently the main maintainer of the Sparta modeling framework. It is available on GitHub as well. It's an open source framework. It's part of the Sparsians repository. And as a sub repository, it's called MAP, the Modeling Architectural Platform. It's all C++. If that wasn't made clear up front, I apologize for that. This is all C++ modeling and Python. So you use Sparta modeling framework, which is full of just all kinds of tools and, and background and tinker toys, so to speak. And then using that modeling framework, you build a performance model on top of it. That's what we're doing with the RIS-5 consortium. So for this talk a little bit more, what we're going to be doing is briefly tell you a little bit more about that SPARTA modeling framework. I will be. And then I will hand it over to Arup, who will go over and tell you more about the RIS-5 performance model as it stands today and what the status is and how you can join the effort to help us get this model off the ground. So a brief introduction to SPARTA. 
this is, as I was saying, this is the framework that is the basis behind the RISC-V performance model that is an open source part of the RISC-V uh, community. It is just like STL or Boost. The idea is that it is a set of C++ classes and structures and componentry that you put together to build your performance model. It is a discrete event simulation framework. There are other frameworks just like this, very similar to this, that are also discrete event. But this one is based purely on the software design principles of being extremely discrete event simulation to try to achieve the highest performance you can possibly get. Because when you're doing performance analysis, the more workload and applications you can run through to get your answers, the sooner you can make design choices and decisions and to be able to apply them to your hardware designs. So the uh, <clears throat> Sparta contains as a, just a few bullet points to illustrate what it has. That it can create, allows you to create simulation instances. These are things you don't have to use, but it does allow you to use them. Um, you can define your hierarchies. So like you do in hardware, where you define hierarchies and how you define how component trees are, usually they're starting with a, a, a keyword top, and you go down component tree on that. Sparta allows you to define the same, similar types of concepts. But the main difference here is that Sparta, because this allows you to define units and resources, representing each one of those modeling components independently, they're all modular. They're plug and play. So you can grab any component within a Sparta modeling framework. Let's say that you want to grab a specific component like a decode block out of a core and just put it in its own unit test. You can take the decode block and replace it with a more advanced decode block, and the rest of the framework doesn't change. In order to do that, Sparta provides all kinds of other components to do that, such as parameters for runtime behavior. It applies that on top of the tree that you build. You build a topology. You put the parameters on top of the topology. And those parameters dictate how the behavior of each one of your units work. Anywhere you are in your code, you can access a parameter to say, what am I supposed to do in this situation? Um, it allows you to define dynamic configurations using YAML or Python. So you can and define architectures. So you can say, I want to start with this architecture or that architecture. And dynamically, at runtime, change the behavior of the model. But the most important thing that it does is it defines a set of counters, statistics, reports, logging, notification mechanisms. The idea is you want information out of this model. If you don't get information out of this model to tell you what the microarchitecture is doing, it's useless. So this information is, is collected by the model. A report mechanism, which is extremely powerful, to me it's one of the most powerful features of Sparta, allows you to do a de specific identifications and analysis at any given time or any given notification or any given spot within your performance model based on what your workload is doing. Now, I'll be going over that tomorrow as well in the tutorial. And of course, it defines other things such as timing events and orders and so forth. So with all that as a background of what Sparta is, its main purpose is essentially to be that, that instrument to allow you to build those performance models. It was designed from the very beginning and using the software development process. Report requirements gathering, use case gathering, we did design and documentation, we wrote a bunch of tests, which all failed because there wasn't anything to test, and then we built the framework. And then the framework had to pass the tests. And that way we had a nice plethora and a deep testing environment, so if we make changes to the framework, it's good and solid. So it's very important for it to be. Okay, Sparta itself, this is where locations where you can find it. There's documentation, essentially the overview is a slide set that I put together to describe Sparta as another high level componentry. And in any given time in the Spartans map repository, if you have any questions about it, please open a discussion. I'd be happy to answer any questions re related to it. And I'll leave you with this picture as one of the last bits. This is a fragment of essentially what Sparta is. Everything in green is the framework. Everything in blue is the RISC-V performance model. So essentially everything that RISC-V performance model that Rupa will be going over uses everything in green. Okay, with that, I'll hand it over to Ruth. Okay, thank you, Newt. Um, I'm Arup, I work in the performance team in Ventana. Um, so what is the RISC-V performance model? Like what is there in the GitHub repo that we showed earlier? So it's a C++ based model, an example model that uses the Sparta framework to model an example superscalar out of order processor. It does not represent anything, any current or any real design at this point. And uh, the intention of this project is to you know, create this model so that the community can use it, they can play with it, they can do some basic performance analysis and contribute to the model and even extend it for their proprietary needs. So this is how the sort of the model, uh, you know, 
flow looks like, the pipeline looks like. It's a, as I said, it's a typical superscalar processor with in order fetch, in order decode, rename, dispatch, out of order execute, in order retire. The instruction flows like this. There is uh, already uh, back pressure, like if there is, if a queue fills up, if the rename queue fills up, it will back pressure to the decode. So the instructions are flowing, but their flow control is already there. Now, as Newt said that this is a brand new model, only a couple of months old. So most of the units in the model are, have, have minimum functionality or they are, or they are passed through, they are passed through. So for example, um, but, but this, despite that, that does have, this model does have some functionality. Like for example, the, we do not have branch prediction yet, but the fetch unit fetches a fixed number of instructions every cycle and passes it, uh, flows it down the pipeline. The instructions are decoded and they, we identify that this is a branch instruction, this is an add instruction, and so on. And when it reaches the dispatch stage, they are routed to the correct execution unit. They would actually stall, you know, depending upon the latency, they would stall, uh, you know, if the execution units are busy and so on. And you can see that on stats, and then they would retire, retire in order. Uh, the ISA that we model is this, this RV64GC, I mean, fairly common ISA. Uh, so what's the status of the model? today, like what can you do with this model, like if you actually check out the model right now. <clears throat> so we already have three sizes of machine, like we have a small core, two wide, a medium core, three wide, and a big core, eight wide. So you can use any of these uh, today, you know, with, with the model. It includes a sample dry stone trace, that you can run through these different architectures and you can see how the performance, uh, you know, you can see the IPC actually uh, gets better, you know, stalls, reduce, and so on. And there are directions to make your, create your own trace. Um, and again, as Newt mentioned, the reporting infrastructure in this model is already very powerful. This comes from Sparta, uh, which has been in development for years, and uh, this provides uh, various different kinds of reporting. Like one of them is cycle by cycle uh, report. So for a given interval, you can generate a cycle by cycle trace of your pipeline. You can visualize it, you can see the instructions flowing, where the stalls are happening in your, your entire pipeline. You can generate reports from the beginning of the simulation, uh, your stats, stats reports, or after warm up. You can generate uh, time series reports at a given, at a specified given interval, and reports in different forms like text, JSON, CSV, and so on. So we are going to have a demo tomorrow where we are going to show all this, like these different uh, sizes of different, uh, different architectures, different cores that we have, how to run Rhystone, how to generate reports, vi pipeline visualization, and so on. So please come out and check, uh, check out the demo tomorrow. It's at 10 o'clock. So that's where the model is today. Now, I want to uh, talk a little bit about where we can take the model forward and how can we do that. So the first thing is that, as Newt mentioned, that this is a new model. We, are, we have like a couple of people working on it. But in order for this model to be uh, successful, to do, make this effort successful, we need help from the community. So, you, um, we need you to use the model, and you know you would uh, uh, you would run into how to you, you uh, run into how to use Sparta, you know, uh, and there are resources out there. We already have tutorials on how to learn, uh, you know how to identify uh, uh, issues about Sparta, how to use that uh, in order to do the modeling and so on, and then we have a bunch of issues that we already in the GitHub repo where we need help from you. And so we need you to contribute to the discussion and also to the code development. So if you look into the charter of the SIG, our charter not only includes 
the discussion and documentation is actually includes uh, delivering this model, and that cannot happen without coding. So if you are interested in performance work in Risk Five, I would encourage you to take a look at this model, see what's out there, and see if you can contribute to these specific issues. And if we can do this right, and if we can do this quickly enough, we can make this model as the starting point for anyone doing any performance work in the Risk Five community, you know, be it in the industry, in the academia. So with that, I want to end. Um, this is the uh, URL for our um, the the SIG. So please come and join the SIG, and with that we can take some questions. All right, thanks, guys. I had two questions in chat, and I think they both probably go back to Newt's portion of the topic. Uh, Newt, and I recall some discussions of this in the SIG. Can you make a brief comparison between Sparta and Gem 5? Because the question was, uh, yeah. how accurate is it compared to Gem 5? So maybe it would be helpful to you know, kind of broaden that a little bit, but okay. in the spirit of you know, what's the difference here sure. for those I'll that are I'll try to make it brief because I know that we're yeah. a little bit low on time. Um, so <clears throat> specifically when it comes to comparing to Gem 5, Gem 5 is obviously a very mature simulator as the way it is. It's an execution-driven simulator as well, so you can run out applications and so forth. As far as accuracy goes, accurate to what would be my first question. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're trying to accurately measure. And it's not necessarily a talking about accuracy of a CPU model. We're actually talking about building an infrastructure or tooling support that enables you to build on top of it and to be able to extensively make it bigger and more powerful than it is. Um, Gem 5 is a very powerful tool. Um, I would argue that ours tool is just as powerful if you're looking at a specific, specific use case, which is essentially I have workloads, I have applications, and I have a specific art microarchitecture, and I just want to run things through as quickly as I possibly can. Right. And I want to be able to tweak and change things as quickly as I want and as rapidly as I want. The other final thing I'll leave with that is that I would also say that Sparta, because this is a Sparta-based model, it's more modular. So each one of the components that are inside essentially the uh, RISC-V performance model are extensible or extractable components that you can drop in anything you want. You don't care about the, for example, the front top part and the mid-core. You're only interested in doing load store analysis. It's just as simple as pulling the load store unit out of this, this RISC-V model, dropping in your own, and then responding to instructions that are being given to you. Okay. So that's the whole point. The second question was around tracing uh, specifically in the area of mispredicted branches. Mm -hmm. uh, can you comment on how that works? Does the tracing, what, how does the tracing handle the, the, yep. the pred branch prediction or, or what it'll follow, what it won't so we follow? Use a, we use a library called the STF Trace Library. It's part of the Sparsians repository. And the way the, tra the, way the branches work is when a, uh, essentially you trace on a functional model. Functional model knows nothing about branch prediction. So it always resolves the branch correctly. In the trace itself, if the branch was not taken, the next instruction would be essentially the sequential address. And so by just looking at the next instruction, you know that the branch was not taken. If it was taken, however, the branch would actually have a targeted address inside the trace, which you can ask, what's your target? And you can use that in your branch predictors. So the idea is, and in the future, if we add a branch predictor, which I know Rupa is looking at right now and would love some help with, um, the idea is essentially the branch, those four instructions or instructions would come in, the branch would come in, go to the branch predictor, it would say, wh what's your direction? And it would say, okay, well, I'm my prediction logic, the way I wrote the predictor says it was not taken, but I see that it was, so therefore we're going to go down the pipe. The model does support flushing. We do have that working. So we just need to hook up a branch predictor. Cool, excellent. And thank you to the person online that submitted those. Questions in the room? We have about two minutes. Um, you talked a lot about the uh, core side of things. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what's your vision for dealing with fabrics, oh, cache sure. coherence fabrics? Absolutely. So the Barcelona Supercomputing Group, for example, has actually created a simulator called Coyote based on Sparta modeling framework, which is their interconnect fabric for their high-performance computing. Um, that model itself is always open source and available too. So that, that model you could take, and we had, for example, he and I were talking about it at lunch, it would be kind of fun to take this RISC-V performance model and hook it into that one. It's all based on Sparta. And so they use the ports and concepts and all the design structures that are there in the Sparta framework. And we've done this in the past and other types of things. We had one team that was developing interconnect models, another one that was developing CPU models. Because we all stuck to the same framework standard, it took a day to connect the two. And actually, then at that point, it was just bugs trying to make sure the load story and the BIU and so forth were talking correct language to the, uh, the interconnect. So we would love to actually have this model expand on that one. Right now, the memory subsystem in this model is a dumb latency. It's just a number. 
and it just puts an event way out in history, in the future, I mean, and then that, that comes back. That's all there is. But it's ex definitely extensible. One more question, last yeah. question. No pressure, Alan. So this is more procedural, I would say, than, than technical, and that is there is a, a simulation task group under uh, Wei Wu and the ISA infrastructure. I was wondering what the, what the connection is between that effort and, and this one. They're, they're, that one's covering more than, I mean, it's supposed to be sort of general simulation, not just performance. So I, I think that um, is more about functional simulation. So our charter that was under, you know, came from the soft, uh, software HC under Philip is to develop a performance model, okay, that can be used by the community. So that has been our goal, and also developing the trace formats and everything that goes with it. So that, that is the so difference. Through this effort, there's no connection? Yeah, I, yeah. There is, there is no connection okay. yeah, as of now. Right. Um, yeah, to summarize that for the people on the phone, it's being treated as separate. Uh, I think the other thing is the simulator group is just sort of getting started. I mean, they're working on charters, so hope, you know, maybe at some point there could be some discussions, but certainly. Yeah, it sounds discussion. like we should be collaborating. Yeah. I, I like yeah, that. at least yeah. have some discussions. I yeah, think absolutely. that would be good encouragement. Alan's great at asking those sorts of questions <laughs> that encourage us to improve our behavior. So thank you, Alan, for that quality question. All right, everybody, let's give him a round of applause and we'll get to the next topic. Thank you.